Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I think I've mentioned before that a few years ago, I was a counselor at the Ionian Village summer camp in Greece. And the unique thing about this summer camp is that every other day while at camp, the counselors lead the campers out on day trips to various amazing religious sites, and ch such as churches and monasteries all around Greece. And for each one of these day trips, a few counselors in particular are in charge of five different buses that take the kids from place to place. And if you are a bus leader, as these counselors were called, you had the most responsibilities out of all the counselors. And to remember all of your responsibilities, you were given a very, very important clipboard which listed the itinerary for the day, as well as the names of the kids that you are responsible for. It was drilled into us that no matter what happened on this day trip, do not lose your clipboard. We were never to let this clipboard out of sight. This clipboard was the most important possession that we could possibly have, and no matter what, we could not lose this clipboard. So anyway, one of the days, anyway, one of the days at camps, we were taking the longest trip of the summer to the island of Kefalonia to see the great monastery of St. Gerasimus. And that morning at breakfast, the bus leaders were being announced for the day. I was sitting at my breakfast table when I heard bus number one, leader Christo Papadimus. So I immediately reported to the office to pick up my clipboard for that day. The day went very smoothly and we made it to Saint, the monastery of St. Gerasimus right on time. Now at this point I had been to the monastery myself about three times, so while the kids explored the grounds of the monastery, I simply rested inside the new church building on one of the seats in the back of the church. A few minutes passed by and one of the kids called me over to ask a question about one of the icons in the church. I was explaining the icon to him when one of my fellow counselors came up and asked me, Hey Christo, what time are we leaving the monastery for lunch? I went to check the itinerary to answer her question, when to my horror I realized no clipboard. <laughs> and immediately I went into panic mode. I searched high and low in the church, no clipboard. I ran outside passing my fellow counselors. Have you seen my clipboard? My clipboard, have you seen it? No one had seen the clipboard. I ran all the way to the back. I have ran all the way back to the entrance of the monastery. I searched the old church. I asked the counselors stationed up there, no clipboard. I frantically jogged back to the new church. As the minutes ticked by, I became increasingly panicked about losing this clipboard. After a few desperate minutes longer, I slumped back into the seat in the back of the new church where I had sat earlier, exhausted and defeated. I was sitting hunched over, desperately trying to remember where I lost it. After no recollection, I sat and leaned back in my chair. When I looked up, I realized that there was a very large icon of St. Fanurios almost directly in front of me, but over to the right one space. Oh, the irony, I thought to myself. <laughs> Here I am next to the patron saint of lost things, and I have just lost something very important. I looked up over at the icon of St. Fenurios, then followed the path of the icon to the seat position directly in front of it with one last desperate hope of a place to look. And much to my relief, as my eyes went to the chair, there was my clipboard. Now, why the long story, you might be wondering. This long story is simply an illustration that sometimes we need help seeing something that is right in front of us. Sometimes we need to be reminded of what is right in front of us, what has always been with us. Today's gospel passage is our reminder that God is with us. He always has been and He always will be. 
It is also a reminder that we need to take the time to look for Him, to have faith that He is there. We need to make the effort to open our hearts and to feel His presence. In today's Gospel passage, we find the disciples out at sea, caught in a terrible storm, being tossed about on their boat. And the disciples, just like we do when, when our lives become stormy, begin to panic. The wind, the waves, the terrible noises all cause the disciples to panic as any of us would. And unfortunately, the storms of life are many and can, and can be just as overwhelming as the disciples' storm today. COVID-19, work, school, bills, family situations, loss of loved ones, illness, stress, all kinds of storms can surround us and begin to make us panic. However, today we learn that Christ can be encountered in the midst of the storm. When things are going well, we may feel that Christ has blessed us, that Christ is truly with us during these good times. However, when things are not going so well, he feels distant from us. He feels out of reach. We begin to forget that he is still there, even though he is right in front of us. The storms are distracting. They can shake our focus. But we can find Christ. We can find God if we are looking for him and we believe that he is there. But when the storms hit, we don't believe he is there. We often doubt that he is there. Christ himself appears to the disciples during the storm and he even speaks to them. The disciples are afraid when he first appears, so he says to them immediately, take heart, it is I, have no fear. But Peter responds to him, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you on the water, if it is you. Christ has physically appeared to the disciples and they doubt. He has spoken to them, assured them that he is there, and they still doubt. Peter did not say, Lord, bid me come to you on the water. He said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you on the water. And while those of us who have heard this story before usually think that Peter sinks because he is afraid of the storm once he starts walking on the water, there are those that say it was the doubt in his response, if it is you, to Christ that sunk him even before he got off the boat. Now it's easy for us to hear about Peter today and be disappointed in his doubt. Just as it is, just as it is easy for us to be, disappoint, to be disappointed in him when he denies Christ three times before his crucifixion. But Peter himself went on to become one of the greatest saints in our church and even eventually faced his own crucifixion and death without fear. In other words, Peter's faith grew. It became stronger. It became more secure. And if Peter's faith can improve, so can ours. On Monday evenings during Great Lent, we celebrate a service called Great Compline. During this, servant, during this service, a hymn is sung with the refrain, For God is with us, or as it is known in Greek, Mephimono Theos. It is, a, it is a most beautiful and calming hymn, and the refrain proclaims a deep truth and communicates a powerful message. God is present. He is in this world and is in our church and in our lives. It may seem difficult for us to recognize that he is here with us, but we simply need to look in the right place. And if we can't acknowledge his presence, perhaps we can deepen our own faith and share the Lord's experience with others. God is with us. Christ is in our lives. It can be difficult to see him, but he is always before us. He is with us during the peaceful, happy times in our lives, but he is especially with us during the storms in our lives. And even when we feel that we are sinking, if we look for him, we will see that he is not only there, but his mighty hand is reaching out to save us. Lord, if it is you, bid me come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. 
But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, O man of little faith, why did you doubt? Amen.